Okay, big guys here. Yeah. Um, it's um double H here. Back again. Okay, have hope. And look, guys. All right, vampire movies. You know. Um, we've seen this whole Twilight thing around here. You know. Um, what, what's his first Robert Pattinson? And okay, listen. Okay, I know a lot of guys, guys. Okay, not girls, guys. Have a lot of gripes with Twilight. Vampires aren't these cutesy weirdo thing, like pseudo romance weirdo thing, Muay Thai. No. But that's what we've been given with, with, with Twilight, you know. And the whole vampire thing has taken a dip in the less serious di- direction. So, you know, when I saw the, the Daybreakers trailer, I think it was a guy on Talksmark that actually made me aware of it. I watched and I was like, you know, this is interesting, you know. The first half of it was very interesting. Good setup, interesting plots. Second half of the trailer, I was like, okay, it's that looks a bit iffy. I mean, whoever signed up on that music for the second half of that trailer, sack him immediately. To the flick. All right, Daybreakers. This has been made, I think, by the, I think it's called this, the Spirit Brothers, who are German. Made some, um, they, they make genre movies, you know. So, quick plot. Pretty much the whole world has basically been turned into vampires. Like, the bulk of the world has been turned into vampires. And they're all feeding off blood and everything. But a problem arises. There is only enough blood to feed them to carry the um, human race that are now vampires up until the next month. So they're running out of blood. And they have to find new ways of finding blood. Now we have um, Ethan Hawke, who is a hematologist. And he has been tasked with the um, mission to try and find a way for them to get this blood um, and they are working on this substitute which isn't like the real thing but it is the only way that they can um, sustain the lost for blood of this new vampiric race okay so I mean so obviously that's obviously the um, setup and then we now um, Ethan Hawke obviously he finds um, some humans around, and then he actually f- and through these humans he now finds that there is um, another way of actually um, curing them without having this this whole blood thing, and that's where we meet the Willem Dafoe character who was once a vampire, but is now human. Da da dum. So yeah, um, Daybreaks. Look, guys. I mean, a quick roundup of this thing. It's like, look. I think that Daybreak, because it's, it's, it's actually a pretty good vampire movie. If you're into vampires, watch Day, Daybreak. Because, I mean, it's not amazing. Yes, there's some plot holes. Yes, it falls into the um, predictability that we that we, in, in the last third. You know, because I think the last third of films, that's when you can really go into your greatness. And I think it falls into some um, pitfalls in the last third, which I will get into. It, it's quite... Um, briefly, but all in all, I'm gonna give the Spring Brothers thumbs up. You know, I mean, obviously starting off with, I mean, like, I think the start of the movie was great. You know, the the the, the tone when when the credits came up came on, I was like, look, man, wow. I mean, I'm feeling it, man. I'm feeling the tone. I'm feeling the whole vibe that these guys are trying to give me in in, in, in this flick. Um, and then obviously when you see Ethan Hawke, no, no, no. The key thing is, I know when you see the world they create. I mean, because it's the tone reminded me a little bit of. Matrix One, a bit of equilibrium because it's very cold and has a li- and it has a very metallic grey, misty kind of feeling. So you can really feel you know the um, frostiness, stroke darkness of the film. And I you know the the lighting was great, the world that you're seeing with the, with people. I mean obviously the vampires they have these um, yellow cat like eyes, and you know you just felt like it's like man you know this whole world is changing. You really feel like if the world has really come come to life, and They've just, I mean, obviously, they just, I mean, based on the budget, they can't show the whole world, but they just focused on a city and a place. And just looking at that city and the place, the, the people, you know, how they filmed it, and you know, you are into the whole um, setting of the story immediately. So, obviously, you know, we now have obviously Ethan Hawke and everything, Sam Neill from um, Kin and Abel and um, Jurassic Park fame. You know, he, he gives a solid performance and he is like the um, 
head of um, this company that basically produces blood for um, the human race. And Ethan Hawke is the guy who works for him, who is a hematologist. So, obviously, you know, they, um, Ethan Hawke is basically desperate to find a, a, a cure and, 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 and a way of actually um, getting this blood. But Sam Neill wants to use this substitute, which is not like the real kind of, kind of blood. So, obviously, you know, there's a bit of um, tension between them two. But I think, um, obviously, the crux of the story, things really kick off. I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, there may be some slight spoilers here, but, I mean... I've, I've, I've got to get, get into them. I mean, things really kick off when Ethan Hawke, he obviously, he um, saves some humans who are, who basically crash into his car and he actually like saves them from getting caught by some vampires. Because the thing is that people, they, these vampires, they're looking for humans because there's, there's hardly any blood left. So if they see any humans, they're going to get into that tank to get their blood soaked up, man. So... It's actually a big deal that obviously he saves these humans from from getting caught because they know exactly where they are going based on the situation. Um, so yeah, obviously when they get saved, I mean the, the humans then say, "Look, man, we need your help, man." So Ethan Hawke says, "Yeah, sure, of 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 course." And um, you know, get brought to William Dafoe's character, which is very interesting. And that's this is where the um, ideas and the, and the and the creativity from these brothers come out because these brothers they directed and they wrote the the, um, the the film as well so um william defoe's character he was a vampire once but he, then he turned because obviously once he went into um and he, he was driving his car really really fast and then he then zoomed out of his um the kind of the windshield thing of his car got burnt so he thinks oh my gosh he's getting burnt he's gonna die but then as he got to Bond, he then um, dove into into the water. And out from when he, he came from the water, he was finally able to walk in the day. So, Ethan Hawke, with his knowledge, says that, we don't need the blood. We don't have the, we don't have the blood, you know. We can turn vampires back to human. And that is obviously the um, controversial thing that he comes up with to try and save this um save situation that's happening, you know. And I think um obviously so, you know, we now have some, you know, the crazy things happening because you know there's a subplot of Sam Neil and his daughter, which I think, you know, that subplot I felt w- could have been interesting because obviously this is the girl that we obviously see at the beginning of the of the film. And I felt that that could be had have been a very interesting subplot because obviously, you know, the daughter was human. She ran away when she saw her dad, Sam Neil, turn, turn into a vampire. So there's there's like that there's a very nice tension that they could have really played with and developed from that kind of relationship. But I think that it was put in there, but it wasn't really extracted enough. And here's 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 what I think about this film: is like there are many interesting ideas in this film, you know. And I think it is a very it's a very quality vampire movie because it's got many different kinds of ideas in it, you know, explaining how the vampires, they turn into the, the bat-like creatures um, because if they don't have enough blood and everything, that they start to de-deform and turn into that whole bat thing. You know, that that was interesting, you know, and seeing the bats living in, in the alleyway and vampires having to hunt them down. And I just think that, you know, I mean, there were too many ideas in the film and I think that the 90 minutes time was not enough to really do justice for um all these um ideas that that, that, they, that they had in the film so i mean i just think that you know but for from what is there directing wise idea wise writing wise i think it's, it's a quality film but i felt like they got a bit too actiony too immature at the end because it just got too really ridiculous with just things blowing up twist after twist and they were just forcing too many story threads to be resolved in 10 minutes and that's just too hard you need more time to resolve all, all these story story threads but i think for just a quick summary of the review i think it is a top vampire movie a great great antithesis to twilight of course and you know i just feel like if you know um guys should really go out and check this film out because in a day and age where there's hardly any originality i feel that daybreakers is a very very it's one of the, the stronger films I've, I've seen out there in a year of 2009 being absolute crap. So, you know, I think that you should really go out and check that film out. Peace.